Hello everyone and welcome to another Guild Wars 2 Living World video. Today we're going to of course be focusing on the Sky Pirates of Tyria. I will say that going into this, this living story was not very much about story so much as just content being added. So expect this video to be a little light. So to lead into this, if you remember from the Dragon Bash story, Mai Trin, who is the leader of the Aetherblade Pirates, who are Sky Pirates, attacked the Council in Lion's Arch and ended up actually murdering one of them. This was in her plan to become a member of the Council, which fell flat on its face, you know, when she was discovered as the murderer. After this attack, the Lion Guard and Inspector Keel are, of course, out for blood. So they track down the Aetherblade's retreat, which is the Aetherblade hideout in Lion's Arch itself. This discovery leads the players to go through a really long dungeon that has two main boss fights actually. The first fight is like an inquest Gollumancer. And the main mechanic of the fight is once you fight him in a couple adds, you have to fight these golems while these walls of lasers go around the room. The hardest part of this fight is of course the last days where there's a giant laser wall moving very slowly that you have to move to avoid and the fast moving slow laser wall that you have to jump over by jumping onto boxes. The last boss fight of the dungeon is against Mai Trin and her first mate, Horik. This fight is really an endurance fight where you have to drag Mai Trin into AoEs to get a shield down on her, damage her 25%, and then endure a big AoE phase and repeat over and over and over and over. It kind of tells you something when the achievement for doing it fast is do it within 15 minutes. Once this fight is over, Mai Trin herself surrenders to the Lion Guard, and they take her into custody. There's also a little bit that I did not do because I didn't want to keep doing the dungeon, which is actually shooting down the fleeing airship. From looking around, I didn't see that it changed any dialogue. If that's incorrect and there's something else that gets added on because of it, please post it in the comments, because I don't know what happens there. After some time has passed, there are two new things you can do with this living story. One of them is witness a conversation between Kiel and Magnus. This conversation is probably the most important thing that happens with this living story story-wise so far, in that Kiel is going to be a captain now and will be running for the captain's council. This is a big thing with this next living story and most likely with the one after it even more so. The second big story thing is Mytrin is now locked up in Fort Mariner in a cage. When you go and talk to her, she doesn't really give you much information, but yeah, she just basically trash talks you, and I'm sure she'll come up again later. One last thing that was added during this living story is there's a new jumping puzzle in Gendarin Fields that is the second Aetherblade site, is actually I believe what the, way, the point of interest is called. This puzzle appears to be permanent and will stay in the game from this point onwards. It involves using jump pads and going through hologram walls and things like that to get through the puzzle itself. It's a nice little addition and you know it's always nice to see new permanent content come into the game through these things. So that's pretty much it for the Sky Pirates of Tyria living story. This one might have been short guys but I'll, let me tell you the next one's going to be quite a doozy. If you missed any other living stories that happened in game I should have a video on my channel talking about them. And I hope this helped any of you that missed it, and see you guys on the next one.